Okay, so. Left bumper is jump. Well, technically both A and left bumper jump. When I started playing Hell as Other Demons, this was a massive frustration to me. I didn't have enough fingers on my right hand to play this game how I wanted to. But absolutely having to recondition A button from usage was a major ask from any game, let alone this one. Luckily, I was able to find a balance of these controls after about an hour of playing. Because I don't even think I could have made this review if I would have stayed as frustrated as I started. Hell is Other Demons. Okay, how do I describe this succinctly? I mean, first off, what is a side-scroller that doesn't side-scroll called? How about this? Do you know the game Joust? Okay, take Joust, make it a shmup, and make levels wave-based. Now, throw in a little bit of bullet hell and synthwave aesthetics. I had to look up if Neo Retro was a term yet, because if it wasn't, I was going to coin it to explain this game. There is a sense of familiarity to games with similar genres, allowing a good starting point for Hell Is. The game modes are standard fare. Campaign is your normal start out week, slowly acquiring gems to buy upgrades. There are four areas that are linearly unlocked, each with different color schemes, enemies, layouts, and hazards. Each area also has a new shop that will offer new upgrades. Your character is given what I will refer to as inventory slots to use towards each level, allowing you to customize your setup for the specific challenges. But this also limits what you can take towards each level. After completing the four levels and defeating the four bosses, a portal will be opened, allowing access to the last levels and eventually the final boss. I found that the level difficulties vary. I would be able to one-shot a few, where there were others that took me literally dozens of tries. There is also three challenges to attempt if a level is ever feeling too easy, or you are just a masochist. Then there is an arcade mode that uses more of a roguelite format. You pick from a few archetypes to start as, unlocking upgrades as you acquire enough gems. This is the mode that introduced me to the archer and its bow, which is an absolute game changer. If you want to play this game on easy mode, this is your option. There's also a mode called Lava Climb, which is a pure platformer. But the point is to make it as far up as you can before dying, jumping on enemies as you go. Oh, and before I forget, you know that Joust comparison I made? Not only was I referring to the arena-style static screen layout, but also how you can kill enemies. Enemies can be damaged and killed by landing on top of them. The aesthetics of the game are something I would normally dislike. However, the simple color palettes and synthwave music was weirdly nostalgic. The graphics reminded me of playing original Game Boy games on a Game Boy Color. The same for the sound effects and music being reminiscent of old NES games. But this is what I meant by Neo Retro. If you look too closely, the 8-bit style graphics have too much depth to be of that era. The simple color palette is still bigger than the Game Boy's. The music isn't chiptune at all. And the enemy density would never be possible with the sprites of the era. The game would have a frame rate measured in seconds per frame. And I don't know who is to blame here. Is it my fault for having false reminiscence? Or is it the games for cleverly gaslighting me? Or maybe I should quit overanalyzing this from a negative point of view of how this happened, and just enjoy that I was able to experience it in the first place. On the negative side, I do have to point this out though. The game crashes every time I tried to close it on my computer. So take that for what you will. So I didn't put the entire 10 hours into this game, but I beat the campaign, unlocked a few new archetypes in arcade, and even got a high score in Lava Climb. So short of trying to achievement chase and perfect some runs, I think I experienced this game. Even though the time played may be on the low side, I still do recommend Hell as Other Demons. The control frustrations early on subsided enough that I was forced to own up to my own gameplay failures. 
while the retro stylings in the genres may come across as just another game in a list of bigger titles. The balance of everything is actually more of a boon. There is just enough familiarity to be a jumping in point, but the right mixture of game systems and overall challenge to be engaging. Give it a try. The wheel doesn't always need reinvented. Sometimes, it is just worth appreciating a well-made one. Thanks for watching.